My name is Gabriel Matthews. I'm an industrial designer in the product line and retail design industry. I've created a site that takes the initial mystery out of learning to 3D model. Maybe you want to model characters, maybe products. Maybe you just have ideas you want to try in 3D space. DIY culture talks a lot about MakerBot and other 3D printing technologies. If you want to explore these, you need to have something to print. These five videos will help you get off the ground. In this video, we're going to talk about the software that we're using. Next up, we'll talk about the interface and toolbars. We'll follow that video with viewports and construction planes, and then object selection and object transposition. We'll finish up by bringing it all together and make a simple scene using what we've learned. So first up, let's talk about the software, Rhinoceros. Rhinoceros 3D, or Rhino as it's commonly called, is at a reachable price point for consumer level software. And if you're a student, you get a discount of nearly 80%, making it one of the most powerful yet economical 3D software packages around. To download the software, just go to rhino3d.com, look for the link that says Try Rhino, click on it, and then click on the Rhino 4 evaluation. You'll have to do a little bit of signing up here with your email address, but they'll send you a link so that you can download your trial version. If you're on a Mac, you want to go to mac.rhino3d.com and fill out an application and they'll send you a link. Not only is Rhinoceros one of the cheapest software bundles that you can buy for 3D modeling, but it also has one of the easiest learning curves out of any software that I've used. Now I've used Rhinoceros, I've used Form Z, I've used Mudbox and ZBrush and SketchUp, even 3D Studio Max and AutoCAD. And I can tell you that it only took me about three to six days to really get a good grasp on the logic behind what makes Rhino tick. Now I'm not going to show you in this video series how to do each and everything because I want you to be able to explore a lot on your own, but I will help you get a good grasp on how to navigate through the toolbars and get a sense for achieving the goals that you want to achieve with your model. Another great thing that makes Rhino a great purchasing decision is its ability to let you grow and develop as a computer modeler. You can initially start using Rhino the same way you do with SketchUp, where you're actually just using it as a place to kind of play around and, you know, rough out your geometry. As you start to move along with your education in computer modeling, you'll start to learn that you can really tighten up your models and make them something that's presentation and even in Rhino production worthy. This is one of the benefits of Rhino is that it really gives you that, that latitude to be able to do something really quick or spend a lot of time on something and make it something that can actually be used. And again, Rhino's a great software environment to learn quickly. And I can't emphasize that enough. If you want to learn how to model, and you want to do it quick, Rhino is probably one of your best bets. Another great selling point of Rhino is that it's flexible with its file conversion, its plugins, and its rendering. You won't find too many computer modeling programs that offer the full gamut of import options that Rhino does. It can take everything from a T-Splines file to an AutoCAD file, 3D Studio Max, OBJ, you name it. This this software can really open up just about anything. And it's great as acting as a conversion software too. Say you need to go from SolidWorks to Cinema 4D or Cinema 4D to SolidWorks. I can't tell you how many times I've had to do that and it's been because of Rhino's ability to convert files. So it's another way to really just add some flexibility. This is a great software at a reasonable price that's super quick and it's really easy to learn. I highly recommend it. Some of the things we'll be doing in Rhino you can do in other software programs. The software hotkeys and buttons are a little bit different, but we'll be focusing more on theory than application. So just keep that in mind if Rhino doesn't seem to be your best fit. So that's all for today. In the next video, we'll be discussing the interface and toolbars. So thanks so much for watching and stay tuned.